Here's the question. Which is the structure that connects the fetus to the placenta? In the options, we have amnion, umbilical cord, yolk sac, and the chorion. So what is the placenta? Placenta is a structure that is formed during pregnancy. And it is through this placenta that transport of oxygen and important nutrients takes place from the mother to the fetus. And it is very important for the development of the fetus. Also, it is through the placenta that the wastes are removed from the blood of the fetus and transported into the mother so that the mother can eliminate it. Okay, so this is the placenta. And here, uh, there is a connection that exists between the fetus and the placenta. And that is known as the umbilical cord. So the placenta, this part is connected to the fetus by the umbilical cord. It is a long tube-like structure. It begins to form during the fifth week after conception. And uh, like I already mentioned, it connects the developing fetus to the placenta. It is nicknamed as the supply line because it transports nutrients and oxygen to the fetus and carries out the removal of fetal waste products. The blood within the umbilical cord is rich in very rich in undifferentiated stem cells. That is why the umbilical cord is preserved. Okay, so that is about the umbilical cord. The structure that is connecting the placenta to the developing fetus is known as umbilical cord. So the correct answer to this question is option B. Here's the question. Urine test during pregnancy determines the presence of DASH. In the options, we have HCG, estrogens, progesterone and luteinizing hormone. Though missed periods is an indicator of pregnancy, it does not confirm that the woman is pregnant. One reliable test that confirms pregnancy in women is the urine pregnancy test. Okay, so you may have seen in ads how there is a stick that comes with the urine pregnancy test kit. So this is the kit. Okay, so if you can see just one line in the kit that will rep, uh, indicate that the woman is not pregnant and if you can see two pink lines it will indicate that the woman is pregnant okay so in this pregnancy test kit you can find uh, antibodies that help detect if the urine is showing the presence of hcg okay hcg stands for human chorionic gonadotropin and this hormone is found only in pregnant women and at a uh, some stages of pregnancy, early pregnancy, you can find some of this uh, HCG hormone being present in the urine as well. And that is what is used to detect if the woman is pregnant or not. Okay. So HCG is the hormone which is present in females only during pregnancy. It can be found in the urine. Okay. And uh, being HCG positive, that means if you get two pink lines in the kit, it will confirm that the uh, woman is pregnant. Okay, so in the options, we had estrogens, progesterone and luteinizing hormone as well. Estrogens and progesterone, they are found in females even when they are not pregnant. So that does not indicate pregnancy in women. Luteinizing hormone again, that also is found in uh, women at all times, even when she is not pregnant. And uh, the function of luteinizing hormone is to induce ovulation. And it also helps maintain corpus luteum, which will produce progesterone. Okay, so that's about these other hormones. And the hormone that is found in urine pregnancy test kits is option A, human chorionic gonadotropin, which is abbreviated as HCG. Here's the question. Which of the following occurs first during development of an embryo? In the options, we have differentiation of tissues, differentiation of organ, differentiation of cells, and differentiation of organ systems. So let's find out what the correct answer is. During the development of an embryo, the first thing that will take place is the differentiation of cells. Okay, so fertilization is a process by which the male gamete, the sperm, fuses with the female gamete, the egg, to form a diploid zygote, right? This zygote will undergo several cleavage divisions to form a ball of cells that is known as the morula. So the morula will eventually give rise to an embryonic stage known as the blastocyst. And the blastocyst will get implanted or embedded within the endometrium layer of the uterine wall by a process known as implantation. And within this blastocyst, you can find a group of cells inside that is known as the inner cell mass and an outer layer of cells that is known as the trophoblast. The cells in the inner cell mass, it will undergo various rearrangements and it also will, uh, you know, 
uh, fold upon itself to form uh, three different layers that is known as the germinal layers. And at that stage, the embryo is said to be the gastrula and the process is called gastrulation. So, the three germ layers are the ectoderm, endoderm and the mesoderm. The inner cell mass by the process of gastrulation will form a structure known as the gastrula and in the gastrula you will find the three germinal layers and each one of those cells in these three different germinal layers will differentiate to give rise to different tissues, organs and organ systems. So in the question we were asked what happens first during embryogenesis or development of embryo. The first thing to happen is differentiation of cells and later only differentiation of tissues, organs and organ systems will take place. So the correct answer to this question is option C. Now here is an interesting question. In humans, the sex of the baby is determined dash. In the options we have at the time of implantation and by the maternal gamete. Option B at the time of implantation and by the paternal gamete. At the time of fertilization by the maternal gamete. At the time of fertilization by the paternal gamete. So let's find out when exactly the sex of a baby is determined. Okay. So sex determination in humans occurs at the time of fertilization. Now what is fertilization? Fertilization is a process when the male and the female gametes fuse to form the diploid zygote. In humans, the male gamete is the sperm and the female gamete is the egg. We humans have a total of 46 chromosomes present in 23 pairs. So 22 pairs or 44 chromosomes are referred to as the somatic uh, chromosomes or the autosomes. And the last pair or the two chromosomes are referred to as the six, sex chromosomes. Okay. So it is the sex chromosomes that determine the gender in humans. Females uh, in humans, they have 44 autosomes and two X chromosomes, okay? So, because of this, they will be able to produce just one kind of gamete due to which the females are referred to as homogametic. Remember, during uh, formation of gametes, a type of division known as meiosis will take place and as a result, the cells that are formed as a result of this type of division will have only half the number of chromosomes present in the parent cell. So we start off with a diploid cell that has 46 chromosomes in total, of which 44 will be autosomes and there will be two sex chromosomes of the same type in females. Both are X chromosomes. And after meiosis will take place, you will get cells that will have half the number of chromosomes. It will have 22 autosomes and one X chromosome. Since there are sex chromosomes of the same type, there is chance of producing only one type of gamete in females, which is why we refer to females as homogametic. Okay, talking about males in humans, similar to females, the autosome number in males also is 44. But the difference is in the sex chromosomes. They have two different types of sex chromosomes, X and Y. Okay, so during the process of spermatogenesis uh, or formation of the male gamete sperm, Myotic division will take place similar to how it takes place in oogenesis in females, okay? So after meiosis, you will have cells at the end of meiosis, you will have cells that will have half the number of chromosomes present in the parent cell. So if the parent cell is diploid, here you will have haploid cells. And because there are two different types of sex chromosomes, two different types of gametes can be formed by males and humans. Either it can have 22 chromosomes plus the X chromosome, or it can have the 22 autosomes plus the Y chromosome. Because there's more than one type of gamete that can be produced by males, the males are said to be heterogametic. Okay, now let's find out what different uh, possibilities are there during fertilization. Remember, females are homogametic. They will always produce 22 autosomes plus the X chromosome during normal conditions. Okay. Whereas the male can either produce 22 autosomes plus X or 22 autosomes plus Y. If the sperm that is carrying the X chromosome fuses with the egg carrying the X chromosome, it will result in a zygote that has 44 autosomes and 2 X chromosomes and that will result in the development of a female baby. Okay. In contrast, if the sperm is carrying, the sperm that is going to fertilize the egg is carrying a Y chromosome, it will result in 44 autosomes plus X and Y and it will result in the baby being male. Okay, since males are heterogametic, it is the male parent that decides the gender of the baby. Okay, so 
the possible combinations are xx xy again xy and xx with the if the mother is only contributing the x chromosome in all four combinations and it is the father or the sperm that decides whether uh, the baby is going to be male or female okay therefore in humans the sex of the baby is determined at the time of fertilization and by the paternal gamete so the correct answer to this question is option d here's the question label the paths shown in the diagram below okay so there are four labels to this diagram there's one two three and four and we have to label them correctly now before we look at the options let us examine this diagram in detail and find out what these different labels represent so four here represents the wall of the uterus okay so after fertilization the zygote develops into the embryo and the embryo in the blastocyst stage will get implanted or embedded into the wall of the endometrium and that is uh, endometrium is a layer present in the wall of the uterus so after fertilization the embryo gets implanted into the uterus along the endometrium and here four represents the uterine wall and two here represents the umbilical cord i'm sure you know about the placenta placenta is a structure that acts as a connection between the mother and the developing fetus right so there is a cord a tube like structure that connects the placenta with the fetus okay that is known as the umbilical cord the mother and the fetus are connected with the umbilical cord and its function is to ensure exchange of gases nutrients and waste products happen between the fetus and the mother it is through the umbilical cord that oxygen and nutrients are delivered to the developing fetus and the waste products from the developing fetus like the nitrogenous waste and uh, carbon dioxide are transported from the fetus to the mother so that the mother can eliminate it okay so that happens through this umbilical cord and two in this given diagram represents the umbilical cord talking about one one here represents the amniotic sac it is a sac uh, within which a fluid is found and that fluid here is labeled as 3 okay so one in this diagram represents the amniotic uh, sac while three represents the amniotic fluid so amniotic uh, fluid is what uh, is present within the amniotic sac and it acts like a shock absorber and protects the fetus okay so now that we know what different uh, labels here represents let let us arrive at the correct answer it is option c one represents the amniotic sac Two represents the umbilical cord. Three represents the amniotic fluid, and four represents the uterine wall. Okay, so the correct answer to this question is option C.